Greetings, travelers, and welcome to Traveler RPG Headquarters. You can find our Facebook group by searching our name on Facebook. I'm your host, Frank Sucardi, also known as Cyborg Prime, and today I'm happy to introduce Mr. John Watts of Gypsy Knights Games. Welcome, John. Hey, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for joining us. Um, so, this is, uh, I just want to thank you for participating in our May Day Traveler Day event. It's, uh, it's a day that uh, we celebrate Traveler and all of its offshoots for all the fun times it's given us. Um, at first I was thinking, well, maybe I was just uh, going to make it a pure Traveler holiday, but then I realized, well, there's things like Cepheus Engine and uh, so forth and uh, all kinds of um, offshoots that are just the children of a uh, traveler and they should be included too so uh so thanks for uh, your contribution to the world of traveler and its offshoots <laughs> oh no problem no problem at all i i have fun doing it so. great great so um tell us uh when when were you first interested in in gaming uh well you know it's interesting um when i was in high school uh that was you know it was probably probably around my freshman year in high school i would say the um, there were a group of people playing Dungeons and Dragons uh, in the gym. Uh, essentially, when I was in high school, they would allow you to kind of sit out if you didn't want to play the volleyball, which they were you know, everybody else was doing. And so there were there was a group that had sat down and played Dungeons and Dragons. And I, being the outsider I was, I, I was not invited to play Dungeons and Dragons, but I was very interested in what they were doing. And it seemed like a lot of fun. And so I thought to myself, well, you know, I should get in on that. And uh, Eventually, what ended up happening was I started trying to get hold of a D&D &D set, and my parents uh, didn't really like that idea. They they'd heard a lot of the uh, a lot of the different bad things about D and D. They didn't want to be getting involved in it and all that. So bad, bad, bad. So we didn't get involved in that. And instead, I sort of gravitated to Star Frontiers, and I played Star Frontiers for a while. Ended up playing. Uh, Ended up playing James Bond, uh, 007, which still one of my favorite games. I love that game. Great game. I, and, oh, yeah. I absolutely love that game. And that, that was something we tried to revisit a bit with Action Movie Physics, our other game that we do. But, um, but yeah, yeah, I absolutely love James Bond 007. Um, had a lot of fun with Star Frontiers. And eventually Star Frontiers, I didn't really have... Uh, it didn't really have the, uh, you know, more material for it. I, I was able to come up with my own stuff for it, but, you know, I, I, I kept looking at envy with envy, mm -hmm. um, at these guys who were running around with these bags of books, you know, you, you know, how it was when everybody had D and D books, they, they had like huge bags full of books. Right. And I thought to myself, I need a big bag of books. <laughs> this is clearly what I need. This is what I need to be doing. I'm doing this totally wrong. I don't have a big bag of books. And I had a catalog from, gosh, you know, I wish I could remember what it was, but it was a wargaming group down in Florida somewhere, and they had Traveler stuff. And I looked at the list and saw that there was a big ton of Traveler stuff. And I thought, well, clearly, this is the science fiction game I need to be playing because there's a lot of stuff. Right. And those guys have a lot of stuff. I need a lot of stuff. And so I got introduced to Traveler, um, picked up... Uh, Picked up a few a few things here and there, and um, ended up getting involved in Mega Traveler right as it first came out. Um, as it happened, I happened to be on on vacation in Panama City, Florida, and ended up ended up running across a game store and picking up a Mega Traveler set. And uh, after that, I was hooked. Was it um, what was it about it? Was it just the the sci-fi, the idea of a sci-fi RPG that appealed to you, um, or was it was it that uh, you know in the sea of like copycats, it kind of stood out? Not copycats of sci-fi, but like copycats of of D and D, like Tunnels and Trolls and things like that. What was it exactly that um, kind of hooked you onto Traveler? Science fiction has always been my thing, and realistically. If I had realized that there was a science fiction role playing game before I realized there was a Dungeons and Dragons role playing game, you know, before there was any sort of fantasy or anything like that, I would have been instantly gravitated to that anyway. I see. Um, but, but as it was, I, I had never heard of role playing. It was, it was completely new to me and this was 1984. Okay. And so, so like I said, I, I, you know, went, went straight for Star Frontiers originally mm -hmm. and then went into James Bond and then ended up with Traveler and, 
the the thing that always really interested me about Traveler was, particularly the the early books, because I, I even though I didn't stick with Classic Traveler for very long, I immediately went into Mega Traveler when right. I found it. Mm-hmm. But but it, the the big thing was that you could really kind of create your own world and kind of go with how you wanted to do. And so I could immediately I could immediately begin adding my idea to it mm-hmm. and kind of running with it. And that was that was gold to me. That was something I liked about it too. Um, it, it seemed to kind of expand your brain and like, oh wow, look at all these different possibilities. Um, because with D and D and games like that, you're you're kind of confined to your like medievalish world. But um, right. But with Traveler, you can go anywhere. You can go to a medieval world, or you can go to this far future world, or or oh, you yeah. know, your caveman land. Um, it really opens up yeah. some possibilities. So, um, what did you do? Uh, how did that eventually lead you into um, into game design? Oh well, eventually. Well, I, I started off playing, you know, Traveler as I guess I guess most people do with with the uh, the official Traveler universe, and I I quickly discovered that while while it did speak to me, it didn't necessarily speak to my friends. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of them a lot of them were far more interested in other sorts of things, you know, um, particularly Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a big fan of Star Wars. I always have been and still am. And, uh, you know, so I started trying to mix some of that into it. And so eventually I was using, the only thing I was really using from the OTU at all was the maps, um, the star maps and things like that. Mm-hmm. And I basically built my own, I started building my own story on that. And like the original, the original Spinward Marches map. Sure, sure. Mm-hmm. The Spinward Marches. I was actually a lot more fond of the Solomonic Rim just because I, I, the main reason being that I really liked some of the names. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's, you know, you have Remulac and Krypton <laughs> and things like that. You know, and, and, and just a lot of other, a lot of other names that I just really liked. And, and I, I, I started moving into that. And, um, well, I went through, I went through a period when I was in college where I was a bit depressed and I sat down and created a new Magyar sector. So, you know, Magyar is just, uh, let me see if I can get my directions right. Spinward of the Solomon Iron Okay. And I just sat down and took a notebook and created each planet, did an entire thing for them, and was really intrigued by the whole idea. And so I just, I basically went through and created all of Magyar sector. And just, and this was my hobby for, oh gosh, over a month. Okay. And I found that I was a lot more interested in Magyar Sector now that I had spent all this time creating it. And so I started moving all of the adventures that I was running for friends. I had I had a gaming group that was still here in my hometown. And then I had another gaming group that I had built at, at when I was in college. And so, which was in Athens, which is about three hours away from each other. And so I started pulling all that together and basically came up with one narrative. And, you know, had everybody coming in. And if any of my friends from out of town came in, he came into Athens, or if some of my friends in Athens came back to Ringgold, where I live, um, you know, we, we could go back and forth and, you know, have this kind of interlocking narrative that went together. And that was, that was really the, the crux of it. The, the other thing that, that really hit me was that I was very fond, I was very fond of some of the aspects of Traveler. Um, particularly the communication moving at the same speed as the starships mm-hmm. and things like this. And it just so happened that I read something in the back of the Varger source book, the original Varger source book, that said something along the lines that, well, it compared that sort of trans, the transportation and, tra- and um, communication being the same speed to the 1880s. Mm-hmm. Like the age yeah. of sail, or well, beyond mm-hmm. the age of, age of sail. Right. Yeah. And there was a, there was a bit in the back of the Varger source book that basically said that you could, you could make an analogy for the Old West with that. And, you know, you could have the, the Varger be, you know, the Native Americans and you could have everybody moving through and all this, you know, but not, don't take that too far. Mm-hmm. Well, I took it too far. I immediately took that as a challenge. Said, no, 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 no. This is, this is great. I can do this. And it just so happened that I, I saw Silverado. I don't know if you remember yeah. this movie, but mm-hmm. it was actually one of my favorites. And I saw Silverado at just about the same time that I read that in the back of the Varger source book. And so I put the two things together. And that was really the genesis of the planet sector. I see. With the idea that you, like like they were 
you know, you would you you were having some sort of adventure here, and then you moved on to the next town, and you know, and this sort of thing. And so that that really that really drove me, and that was that was sort of where Clement Sector came from. Um, was this sort of mixture? So was that something that you um, put together for your friends, or uh, at first, like you were saying, these interlocking? Uh, these interlocking adventures that ended up being the Clement sector. Yeah. So I guess, I guess you did answer that. Um, so, um, how, tell us, tell us a little bit more about, um, the background, uh, of the Clement sector, as far as it relates to some of your new products coming out. Uh, I noticed that, uh, you just had, uh, almighty sec, the almighty credit and, Mm -hmm. um, Oh yeah, yeah balancing yeah, yeah yeah here it is sorry balancing act and almighty credit uh or yeah just balance, came out. balancing act and almighty credit are well I don't I don't, I don't want to say they're completely locked together you don't necessarily have to have both of them but balancing act we introduce a more strategic level of looking at planet sector so that you can play um, a government you know, one of the, one of the government's employment sector, and there's plenty of them. Um, and you get to kind of make those sorts of high level decisions and their tasks and things like this and how to move back and forth and so forth and so on and what you can and can't do as, as a government employment sector. And then Almighty Credit is the corporation's book that essentially goes along with that. There's a lot of information in there as well that, that you can use if you don't want to go the strategic route. I mean, the, the corporation's very easily used and e- easily used in a normal client sector as are the descriptions of the governments that are imbalancing out. I see. But, but yeah, yeah, together you can, you could play that as a game. And one of the things we're hoping to do at some point in the future is kind of add criminal organizations to that as well. Oh yeah. I found uh, a lot of interest in, um, organized crime in, uh, in my games. The players like to get mixed up in that. Oh, very much so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was always a hallmark of the, the games I was running when I was talking about earlier about going to college and so forth. Because there was always that guy who, you know, watched Star Wars, wanted to be Han Solo, wanted to be a smuggler, wanted to bring things here and there. Right. You know, there's always that sort of, that sort of thing. And then later on, with, you know, the 2000s, we started getting Firefly. And, you know, and all, all of my friends were, and myself are all huge Blake 7 fans. So, mm, know, yes. That, that, that helps. Yeah, so, I only you know, found out about that recently, and I, I, uh, I watched it, and I really enjoyed it. I love that show. That, that I would I would count Blake Seven as one of the one of the big influences on Clement Sector because it was something else that I discovered while I was in college and I had a lot of friends that were it was they were playing it on PBS from Atlanta and we could just barely get it in happen. And we would all get together at one guy's house who could actually get it and watch it. And we uh, I love that show. Absolutely love it. Yeah, I I watch it and I go, Wow, this is very traveler. Very, very traveler. Um It is. So tell us about uh, any future projects coming up. Well, the one thing we've got coming up really soon, on the way it should be out on May the 10th, if everything continues to go smoothly, which I believe it will, uh, we have Interface, which is cybernetics in the Clement sector. It's written by Michael Johnson. He's the same guy who wrote the Anderson and Felix ship design book, as well as um, the recent Artificial, which was the robot uh, design book. Mm-hmm. And this is essentially cybernetics, and it sort of ties in with artificial. If you if you liked artificial, and you you know you wanted to think to yourself, gosh, you know, wouldn't that be neat if we could add some of that to a person? Well, then this is book for you. Um, interface should have a great many options and so forth for cybernetics, and it'll be a lot of fun. What kind of uh, cybernetic things are covered in there? Do you have like um, like uh, replacement organs or and, uh, cybernetic weapons and things like that? Oh, sure. Oh sure, yeah, you know, the, it's all sorts of different arms and arms and feet and tendrils and you know, and of course we have the uh, the hand computers, the mind computers that we we've always had, and of course those are covered in there as well as part of software and things like that. So lots of different things where you can you know add things back on. Right. Um, and like oddly enough, in Clement sector, a, a lot of the a lot of the cybernetics are sort of almost I don't want to say old hat, but a bit a bit you know beyond because we're, they're already starting to do a lot of biological things so that they can grow you another hand and so you know instead of giving you a cybernetic hand for sure time. sure and so yeah so it's it's a bit gauche in some places sure but then again then again you know player characters 
give me a hand with a gun in it. Right, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Plus, that's the, that's the beauty of the plethora of tech levels. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. Well, see, that's that's an odd thing about it. That's an odd thing about coin sectors. I've, I've tried to keep the tech level somewhere between 10 and 12 for the okay. most part. And, and so, you know, it kind of it kind of moves back and forth in that. But, you know... There's one of the one of the things I really love about Clement Sector is there is no overarching um, empire federation anything like that. The only uh, the only government that has any more than one or two pla- that has more than one planet, one system under its control, I should say, uh, is the Hub Federation, which is only about which is only six systems, mm. and everybody else is on their own and independent and. Um, you know, and, and everybody has a different culture. Everybody has a different attitude. Everybody has a different uh, viewpoint. And and I, I think that's I think that's the real solid thing about Columbus. That's what I really love about it. That that sounds like the the charm factor. I mean that um, that does sound like you captured the flavor of uh, Firefly to a uh, large extent. So yeah, you know, successful. and that was a funny thing. That was a really funny thing. Was was uh, because I had already. Been involved, like I was talking about with Silverado and all, and the Varder Source book. I had already sort of started melding the Western idea with with uh, the science fiction idea, and it was a really funny thing because I had all I had I had seen ads for uh, Firefly, and I was not a fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer at all. I didn't I didn't care for it, mm-hmm. and so when I found out that they were going to have Buffy the Vampire Slayer in space, which is what it sounded like to me, I I didn't I didn't watch it. Mm-hmm. And about halfway through the first episode, I started getting phone calls from my friends going, John, John, your game is on TV. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, no, 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 you don't understand. Dude, I recorded it. I'm coming to your house. You're, you're going to watch this because you have to watch it. And I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. So, you know, I was like, wow, this is, this is fantastic. Wow, well, yeah. This wasn't, I maybe was... this wasn't as dumb an idea as I thought it was. <laughs> Space Cowboys, who knew? <laughs> Yeah, I. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. I was a latecomer to that one. I, I saw the movie first because um, I wanted to see the series, but it kept getting preempted by baseball and move the night it was on, and they didn't really, you know, do anything to to cultivate uh, viewership. But yeah. So um, when is when's it, when's Interface coming out? Interface should be out on May the tenth. Great. And uh, if somebody wants to order that or one of your other products, how do they contact you? You have a website, Facebook, something. Well, we do have well, we do have a website. There's uh, www.gypsynightgames.com, or you can find us on Drive Through RPG. Um, you could have found us on RPG now, but I think it's about to die. So. Yeah, it's about to absorb. Oh. It looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, uh, I encourage our listeners to uh, go get go grab some Gypsy Night products, and uh, looks like our time's about up. Uh, I'm your host, Frank Sicardi, called Cyborg Prime on the Internet, and I've been here talking with Mr. John Watts of Gypsy Night Games. John, thank you so much for participating in our inaugural May Day, May Day Traveler Day event. Uh, give oh, us hey, your <laughs> yeah, give us your contact info one more time. Uh, it's uh, www.gypsynightgames.com, or you can find us on Facebook at that. Uh, we're on MeWe, we're on Reddit, we're on lots of places, so just look for us. Great, great. Thanks again. All right. That's all for now, travelers. Until next time, happy traveling.